may think the assembly line at Wheeled Coach looks like controlled chaos, but take a closer look. The company's ambulance assembly activity actually uses a combination of assembly line and work cell layouts, all aided by a precise arrangement of people, skills, and tools. The arrangement chosen by Wheeled Coach has evolved over the years. Lynn Whalen, plant manager, explains. You know, layout is very important to a manufacturing organization, as with any type of business, I'm sure. And uh, ours did go through an evolutionary process. But over the years, there's a few things that we've hung on to that have always worked well for us, and that's proximity. Keeping support items, support functions, and uh, support materials as close as possible to the manufacturing process is very important to us. I remember at one time that the office was right in the middle with the uh, support functions and we had a little uh, ring of production go around the office when we first started trying to do a three or four day manufacturing process in uh, low levels. But as our business expanded, the, the two key things for me is uh, communications and distance. You want to try to eliminate as much distance in the process as you can between people and try to heighten the communication, break, break down physical barriers, get people where they can see each other and work with each other face to face. Those are the key issues. The continuum of layout choices ranges from a continuous flow, like that used in process industries such as chemicals, to the small project. Wheeled Coach falls in between by using both repetitive assembly line approaches supported by work cells. The assembly process starts with the bill of materials for a single customer vehicle order. Each department or work cell involved in the assembly of that vehicle is given work orders just in time to complete its contribution to assembly. For example, the sheet metal building must first fabricate the aluminum outer shell or skin that goes onto the ambulance chassis. This takes five work days. Then the paint department takes three days to prep and paint the exterior surfaces. In the meantime, the upholstery department begins stitching the interior seats and cushions. The plexiglass department will make the interior cabinet windows and doors, including the metal frames. The carpentry department cuts the wood and formica countertop material, then builds the cabinets that will go inside the ambulance. The electrical department will assemble the wire harnesses that connect lights, medical equipment, ventilators, and life support to the chassis power supplies. When the painted chassis are ready for assembly, they're driven to one of five assembly stations on the main line. There, they'll spend eight days. Day one, electrical wiring is installed. On day two, the cabinetry is added. Day three, trim out work is performed. On day four, cosmetic and electrical inspection is done. Day five, work from the previous day is completed and a paint quality check is performed. On day six, a final inspection from the customer's perspective is done. Days seven and eight are reserved for water leak testing, cleanup, and upholstery installation. It may seem like the vehicles undergo a lot of inspection, but Wheeled Coach's product demands it. All five assembly lines move in parallel at the end of each workday to the next station. Employees don't quit until the work for that day is done. Since each vehicle is custom made, that creates big challenges for managers in scheduling the smooth flow of each assembly line. How does Wheeled Coach know what tasks to assign to each workstation in assembly? In our assembly line process, we work laterally across line with our skills. Instead of dedicating all of our labor into one line per se, we work our labor force and skill across those lines. So we'll have kind of a cell within the assembly line that can float back and forth as the labor requirements for different lines increase or decrease. We're able to get a capacity plan for that line station and from that capacity plan, a departmental capacity plan for the line station, the leadership in that area can look at the needs of the vehicle by labor requirement and move the skills that are all trained across those lines to move from this line to that line depending on the day's requirements. At the end of each workday, five custom-built ambulances roll off the assembly line ready for delivery to the customer, who may be as close as the next county or as far away as England, Egypt, Australia, or Japan. In the past, we've had 27 uh, throughput days or work in process days going through our factory. And anybody that's associated with work in process knows that work in process is money and interest tied up in inventory. 
It's spreading out your geographical uh, span of control and it's a loss of communication just by sheer distance and more process management. Over the years we've worked to eliminate uh, work in process and today in our large model products we call our mods we have a 19 day throughput which reduced us eight days and we've reduced our van production to a 14 day throughput. This decrease in throughput or the amount of time that it takes to get the process out from beginning to end has helped us in a number of ways. One, we've cut our holding cost of money We've reduced our inventory levels. And third and most important to me, we've gained tighter control over our quality and our manufacturing process. The facility layout at Wheeled Coach Industries is a good example of how operations management techniques can be applied to a real manufacturing setting. It also shows why layout is one of the 10 critical decisions of operations management. By considering material handling, capacity, space, environment and information flow, the company is constantly reducing costs and achieving greater efficiency.